Hi, this is Brian from Multiversity Comics, sitting here, standing here, with Joshua Hale Fialkoff. I, I, I already messed it up. You're ready. You're ready. Mess it up. Fialkoff. There you go. That's better. So let's start talking about I Vampire first. How did you get involved with this New 52 initiative? Did you pitch to DC, or did they bring it to you? Uh, they brought it to me. I had a meeting with Matt Idelson, uh, who's the editor on the book at uh, Emerald City Comic Con uh, six months ago, seven months ago, and. Uh, he asked me, you know, he asked me if I knew what it was, and I did because I read House of Secrets and House of Mystery so much when I was a kid. And uh, he asked if I'd want to do it, and I instantly said yes. Like I, I genuinely, I genuinely love the originals. Uh, uh, J.M. Dematius did such amazing work and built this great world that it's really easy to update it and make it into something new because what he did was just it's so solid and so terrific. So you are taking a look at the older issues and sort of uh, modernizing it as opposed to starting completely fresh with just the name I Vampire. Because a lot of our readers probably didn't read the original run. Well, they're lucky because DC's actually putting out a trade of it, and it's terrific. Like, it's really, really, really good. Um, but no, yeah, it's, it's the idea for me is to do, like, the way the New 52 was explained to me is what happened before can have happened before, but this needs to be number one, and this needs to be everything that matters needs to be in the book. So I really tried to put the entire, you know, the entire plot, everything you ever need to know about the book in there. But if you want to go back and read the old stuff, you know, there's something it's there, there for you. For you. Yeah. yeah. Um, what drew you to the story initially as a writer? You know, because there are so many vampire stories out there, but this one takes a very different sort of turn instantly. So what drew you to the vampire story in 2011? I think you know part of it is doing uh, part of it is the fun of doing it in the DC universe and getting to have how how do these you know as as like the as kind of all these things are coming out of the woodworks in the DC universe where you know Stormwatch Stormwatch is losing control of the world essentially right and like you have all these different groups of evil things showing up so the idea of doing something like that where you get to use vampires where vampires finally realize like we're we're a, we're a force like we're an army we're you know. That like that to me is really exciting. But the thing that I actually genuinely like the most exciting part of the book is the love, is the love story. Getting to tell a, a true romance comic with a mature, real relationship between a man and a woman with a complicated history and a complicated life together um, to really like you know to really engage uh, engage readers in a way that I don't think you see a lot in comics. Like we have the you know we have the classic romances, but. You don't get to see a lot of people falling in love and falling out of love, and I think that's I think that's actually I don't know if people realize that's what they respond to, but I think that's what a lot of people respond to in the book. But you mentioned this is going to be a part of the greater DC universe. How much do you plan on I Vampire rubbing up against other books? Well, we got John Constantine shows up in issue four, um, Batman shows up in issue five, um, and then I got pretty big plans for going down the road. Like we do some really really cool stuff. So you're going to see a lot of other books. You know, the, the nice thing about a lot of the New 52 is we're all friends like there's a huge chunk of us are all buddies and we all want to help each other and support each other's books so I think I think you're gonna start seeing you know more and more crossover kind of as we start to go but in the in the good way in the way they used to back in the day where you don't have to read both books but hopefully it entices you to read the other book now um the book starts off at a huge moment in the story I mean this war has started there is death everywhere how do you up that you know where do you go after starting this giant battle you know, like, the, the thing about the book is that it starts where it ends, right? So the, the beginning of the book is the end of the book. Not to spoil it for anybody. Uh, the beginning of the book is the end of the book. So, but, despite the fact that you've already seen page 20 on page 1, by adding character and by adding emotion and all that stuff, suddenly that payoff at the end is so much bigger. And that's, that's something that really excites me as a storyteller, is finding ways to kind of, to essentially trick you into having a big moment. Yeah, so that's been that's been the goal, and that's what we do throughout. And I'm I'm really really far ahead on the book. Like we're so I know what happens. I know what happens for the first two years. Wow. You know, and so and we're written through the first year. So wow, it's incredible. Yeah. So like it, it, we it keeps getting better and better. Every issue is better than the last. Like I'm really really excited for people. It bums me out that people have only seen issue one, because I can't wait for people to see what we're doing. It must be very satisfying as a writer to have this book so well received. When the original when the original solicitation came out for the 52 a lot of people didn't know what to make of I vampire I heard a lot of people saying Twilight things like that because vampires tend to be a really popular pop culture thing right now but it's been so well received and I think you know everybody I know this Reddit has absolutely loved it so with that in mind does this think do you think this opens up the door to do more um, non-superhero books in the new DCU I mean I hope so um, 
you know what I'm what I'm hoping is that people did you realize for me like what, what we're trying to do in all my comics whether it's my independent books or my superhero books or my main you know anything is it's all about bringing new people in it's really about expanding what comics can mean because I don't think people realize that you know up until the 50s or 60s comics weren't just superheroes there's always been all these different genres and what happened is after you know after the after the you know the comic burnings and everything in the 50s the only thing that survived were the superheroes um, and everything else has kind of been pushed off to the side. So while you always had like creepy and eerie and all the Warren stuff, but you always had horror books, but they were always kind of marginalized. And the fact is, is that, you know, as much as people love superhero movies, they love horror movies more. They love action movies more. They love spy movies more. Like they love love stories. They love romantic comedies. So like we as an industry have to evolve. Um, and that's been something that I've been saying for a decade. You know, like that's what I've been fighting for with every single book I've ever done. Is showing people like, no, like this is a wonderful way to tell stories, and it engages people in a way that no other medium does. Moving over to Last of the Greats, I find there's a nice parallel between Last of the Greats and I Vampire, as they're both about these incredibly powerful forces trying to survive in on Earth. And so, what inspired you to uh, tackle this sort of apocalyptic superhero tale? You know, a lot of it. I I uh, I had lunch with Mark Wade. <laughs> And we had a long conversation about Irredeemable and how he writes it and sort of his process on it. And what we kind of came out, like what I came out of it with, intentionally or not, was, you know, if you're going to do books that you own, you're going to create things, you need to say something. You need to say something that means something to you. And uh, I wanted to do a superhero book and I'd never, I'd never been able to get into doing a creator-owned superhero book just because I'd never had, I never knew what I wanted to say, you know, and having that conversation and really thinking about it, you know, what I wanted to say is that um, we, we as a species, are physically incapable of trust. Like, that's really what it is. You know, I think about, I'm going to get crazy political for a second. Go for it. I think about Obamacare and how everybody goes crazy about Obamacare. And they call him a fascist because he wants to take care. Like, it's, that's all it is. Like, you know, you could argue, like, the semantics of it. But the, the leap in logic between... I think everybody should be able to go to a hospital and you are Hitler is insane. Like that is completely insane and the jump makes no sense. But that's what we do. Like that's what humanity is and we do it just the same way on the op you know the opposite side. Like when when the conservatives do stuff, the liberals call them fascists. It's the same thing, but there's no understanding of what fascism actually is. There's no understanding of what true evil feels like. And so the idea for me of telling a story that's set kind of in that world where they tried being the nice guys, and if you can't win by being the nice guys, then you have to win by being the asshole. And that's that's at the core of the story, and that's that's sort of like side A, but then the other side is is him, is the last. Like you get to see him start to develop his relationship, to start to like really realize like so what does it mean to be a part of the world? What does it mean to have desire? What does it mean to be a part of life? Um, and that's really what that's really what the first story arc is about for me. Uh, is this a book that has been um, long gestating, or something that kind of came about pretty quickly? I've been tr like I had I had kind of the core pieces of it I've had for a while. It just sort of all gelled after I met uh, Brent, the artist, um, and he was really excited to do the book, and he was just the right guy for it. You know, so it sort of all once I found the artist, it all clicked together pretty quickly. His his art is incredible on the book, and it really does give you this uh, this sense of majesty among the greats. Um, is it something that you see as a story that can continue for a long time, or is this a very condensed sort of set story for you? No, I'd like it to go on forever. Like, I, you know, I have, same thing, I have plans, you know, but the reality is that comics are so hard to do and it's so hard to keep an audience, so you sort of have to, you have to, you have to keep your plans big and small simultaneously. Right. So, you know, if we, like, issue five is the end of the first arc, and it, it wraps up the story enough that if we have to stop, I'm okay with that. But like we're, as of right now, we're planning on pushing through. Like we're we're committed to it. We want to do it. We want to make it, you know, last forever. Excellent. Well, thank you for chatting with us. Oh, thank you so much, man. Have a good day.